Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. This is Adrienne Montgomery with ERP VAR. We're going to get started here in just a minute or so. If you note on your webinar pane, you'll see a question mark uh, right with the button right next to your name. If you click on that button, a dialog box will open up where you can go ahead and key in your question. And we're going to be reserving those questions until the end of the webinar. So thank you so much. All your questions are welcome. We love questions. So uh, we'll get started here just real quick. Uh, Sage, we're going to be talking about Sage 100 Cloud and automating the inventory cycle count, pick, pack, ship, and payments processes in Sage 100 Cloud. We're joined today by Certi Pro Solutions, Simon Quinn, he's a sales manager, ScanCo, Andrew Neal, he's a software sales specialist, and Matt St. John, sales executive over at Starship, and uh, Patty Benitez, vice president of channel over at American Payment Solutions. Just a little bit about the companies here before we get started. Sturdy Pro is located in Los Angeles, California. They have 25 years experience in ERP consulting, and they make solutions that are designed just for your business and your unique needs. Uh, you have a complete access with their certified developers on Sage 100, consultants, CPAs, and software programmers to really understand your critical business issues and design their uh, automated inventory cycle count solution and Sage 100 solution for your business. Uh, we're also joined by ScanCo. They're a Sage OEM partner and a leader in warehouse management since 1989 for Sage 100. They have a real-time warehouse management solution application that resides on iOS, Android, and Windows devices, those mobile devices that the uh, warehouse personnel can interact with Sage 100 in real time, uh, walking around in the uh, shop floor for manufacturing. They have a, shop, a manufacturing application and a warehouse management application. It allows them that mobility on the shop floor and in the warehouse. We're also joined by Starship. They're a Sage Gold development partner. They've been providing integrated shipping solutions since 1989. They have experience with the full spectrum of Sage products. And they also have very key relationships with the carriers and other warehouse management products like ScanCo with integration directly with ScanCo, inventory management and EDI providers like True Commerce, SPS Commerce, uh, the other EDI providers out there that can seamlessly integrate with uh, Starship. And American Payment Solutions are a leader in merchant services. The great thing about American Payment Solutions is that they can get you the lowest rate by using all that customer data in Sage 100 and providing that up to the credit card processing companies to get you level three credit card processing. And Patty's going to review that. And uh, just a little bit about the workflow here. We're going to be talking about the Certi Pro automated inventory cycle counts out in the warehouse and uh, how ScanCo works with Certi Pro for directed picking and auto selecting orders by fill rate uh, and also managing the inventory items life cycle, optimizing your inventory out in the warehouse and using Starship to select the best carrier based on the dimensional weight, all the rules of the shipment where the customer is located, get you the best rate for that uh, shipment. And then how Patty can pick up all the details necessary to get paid by credit card processing faster and with the lowest credit card processing rates. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and let Simon get started. Thank you so much, Simon, We're talking about inventory cycle counts. Great. Thanks so much, Adrian. Let me go ahead and share my screen and we'll get this PowerPoint going. Well, thank you again, everybody, for joining us. So today, I'm going to cover Certa Pro Solutions Automated Inventory Cycle Count Software. I'm Simon Quinn, the Director of Sales for Certa Pro. So I'm going to uh, give you an overview of the concept of this software. I'm going to jump into Sage and show you the functionality. And then at the end of this, I'll show you some of the reporting capabilities that we have um, that tracks all of the uh, cycle counts for you. So using cycle counting to maintain high levels of accuracy is one of the best ways to identify problem areas. 
An effective cycle counting program like CertiPro's AICC eliminates the need for physical inventory expenses. So by performing regular cycle counts, you give yourself the opportunity to compare the quantities in SAGE to the quantities counted. And this variance is a powerful opportunity to identify where your inventory system is working well, where there's little variance, and where you might, might have a control issue that needs to be tightened up, where there's a high variance. So if you notice that your numbers are way off, you now have an opportunity to find out why the problem is happening and take corrective action. So keep in mind, using regular cycle counts allows you to take corrective action more frequently. For example, if you perform monthly cycle counts, you now have 12 opportunities to fix problems versus one when performing annual physical inventory counts. So CertiPro's AICC is going to configure all of this for you. <clears throat> An important difference between cycle counting and taking physical inventory annually, by having your warehouse staff perform cycle counts of segments of your inventory regularly, you negate the need for shutting down your operations for a weekend or period of time just to make sure that your numbers are correct. Now, of course, closing down your business for any period of time is going to be costly, and paying your employees overtime to perform physical inventory counts can add up as well. So that's why our inventory cycle counts, our automated inventory cycle count can help you uh, eliminate. You can imagine your day-to-day -day working life being made easier by, and being better organized with a clearly defined logic to your inventory planning process. So now I'm going to move into Sage. <clears throat> and we'll open this up. And here you would, you'll see that we've created the software under inventory management for the physical count. This is the plugin here, CPS Inventory Cycle Count, and this actually gets installed uh, as a module after you acquire the software. <clears throat> so once I open this up, you will see that the program is a single screen user interface, very simple to use, very easy to manage. Now the warehouses up here are identified using a code, and you can scroll through the various codes or numbers um, with these arrows here. Each warehouse is gonna have its own schedule, and you can configure what time you want to generate a cycle count per warehouse. And you can also set up automatic email notifications by warehouse. So I'm going to go ahead and select warehouse 000. And now that you can see that each one of these grids have populated. So the top grid is the filtering section. The middle grid will represent the filtering choices and shows you what you have assigned into the cycle count intervals. <clears throat> and the bottom is a summary based on your setup. It shows you how many items you will uh, be counting per day. So if we look at some of the filtering choices here, you have all valuations, you have all product types, and you have all procurement types. So by checking or unchecking any one of these, the grid down below will automatically refresh to reflect whatever you choose. Over to the left, we have additional fields. So for example, if I wanted to uh, go enter a standard unit price and I want to look at items that are greater than $1,000. You can see I'll plug that in, and down below, these items show up here with the description over here on the right. So all of these items are $1,000. <clears> so once you filter down to the specific set of items, now you can go and actually perform the updates. Um, so I've already got the items here that are showing greater than 1,000, so now I want to assign them to a inventory cycle category and define how many times I want them to be counted. But before I jump into that, I want to cover some of these abbreviations here. So here we have YCC, RC, FCNT, FCAT, and hold. YCC up here is the yearly cycle count. So upon implementation or adding an item, that item is going to have a value of minus one, which means that you have not touched that item yet. So when you move the item to zero, it means that you've actually added them to be inventoried and counted. <clears throat> Uh, you can also have the number uh, go from 1 to 52, meaning that you can assign an item to be counted once a week, once a month, or whatever interval you require. And the update's very simple. Uh, just click in the corner here, and it's going to highlight all of these items. And I can head down to the count frequency and assign a number. So I'll select a value of 12, and globally it will update all of these here. You can also break them out by, um, you know, doing individual line items if needed. <clears throat> so jumping up to some more of these codes here, the RC, which is the remaining count. So this is another powerful tool that allows you to set up items that are going to be discontinued. So we know that sometimes items are not going to be in your inventory perpetually. 
So this basically allows you to define how many more times you want that item to be counted. So if I select this item to be you know, two more times, um, it's going to be counted, the next couple of cycle counts is going to be counted twice, and then it's going to automatically fall off the cycle count process. So it's going to update the YCC automatically to zero. So across the top here, we have force count next time, <clears throat> and we have force count all the time and hold. So for hold, we know that in every warehouse, there is going to be scenarios where you will pull certain items temporarily to hold, and you don't want those items to be included in the count until the item is released back into inventory. So that's when you would check that box. For FCNT or force count next time, if you find a discrepancy and want it to be resolved as soon as possible, the item in question might be scheduled for a count two months from now, but you don't want to wait. So by checking this box, when you generate the cycle count, the item will be included. So jumping up to the upper right-hand corner, we have the scheduler. <clears throat> and so that will actually, um, this will schedule the, this is the screen that you have the option to schedule the cycle count automatically. So as you can see, we're simply using the task scheduler from Sage 100. And here you can schedule the days of the week that you want to run the cycle counts. Clicking on active warehouse, this shows you all the active warehouses and allows you to manage them, whether you want them to be enabled or not. And jumping to the option screens, uh, this gives you uh, various options for uh, however you want to have this uh, count configured. So for example, to notify whoever's going to be the email notification in the warehouse, this is where you would actually control these email address. Also, one of the other options here is the rollover, the YCC count from large to small. It's a very helpful option for A, B, or C, D item rankings. For example, once all of the A items have been counted, it's going to pull, it's actually going to start pulling all the items from the B category to maintain the same number of items to be counted per day. Jumping to the exception days, this is where you would actually handle um, any calendar uh, issues that come up. For example, uh, doing holidays or vacation days. The holiday type is going to apply to all warehouses, for example, and the vacation type is going to apply to a single warehouse. So you can generate a, man a manual count at any given time, but automatically you can also schedule uh, when you want this count to be generated. So by default, it's going to do it at 2 a.m., but if for whatever reason you can do a manual generation, which I have already done here for these demo purposes. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, let's say that I checked on that and we're going to create that manual count. And so once a count has been created, let's take a look at the spreadsheet that's going to be delivered via email to the assigned warehouse team. So it's an email that has a CSV file that tells you uh, what needs to be counted. So here you have the bin location, the lot serial, the last date it was counted, <clears throat> and any other information that you want to have assigned in there. So if you're using ScanCo or if you're using a scanner, you can actually go ahead and quickly go and verify all the counts and perform the update and stage, stage directly uh, in on the scanner. So jumping from there, once you have your counts, I'm going to go into the, uh, let's see here, close this. go back into Sage, and I want to go into the physical count entry. So we'll put in our warehouse code, and we'll click on the lines, and here is all the, um, <clears throat> here's, here's, you'll see all the items that need to be counted for today, and this is where you would uh, put those numbers, those in. So once the cycle count's been run, all the numbers have been input, you obviously want to know what the results are. How accurate is my inventory? And so for this reason, we've created an explorer called CPS Inventory Cycle Count History. And here, here is the uh, place that you'll find all the items that not only have a discrepancy, but also all of the items that you've counted throughout the year that have been accurate. So you can scroll down and look at the detail uh, by lot serial and filter this any way you want. Um, you can look into how many items are being counted uh, per day, what was the counted quantity, and additional info. So it's completely customizable. And for those users that are familiar with Explorer, you can drag and drop fields and use the filters to analyze the data. You can also export all of this to Excel. 
So with that, um, I'm going to wrap up here and we'll pass it on to, I believe, is it uh, Scanco next? Thanks, Adrian. All right, thank, thank you, Simon. All right, so my name is Andrew Neal, and so just as uh, Adrian was saying today, so what we're gonna go ahead and show you here today from the ScanCo side is how we could actually auto-select our orders by fill rate and, and what that really means, and so how we could actually take that information and really do the most effective picking and shipping the order out uh, so that Starship can go ahead and take off um, from their point of view. So. Without further ado, what we're gonna go ahead and start off with first is how we can auto select orders by fill rate. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is go into my Waveback, Wavebatch order selection. And what this is gonna go ahead and allow me to do is, it, and this is really a good benefit for especially like the food industry. Instead of having to worry about, oh, am I gonna send these pick sheets out for my, or, for my uh, employees to go ahead and pick these orders and worry about, do I have this quantity available on hand? What we can go ahead and do here is go ahead and tie in what percentage fill rate we wanna go ahead and do. So if I wanted to go ahead and tie in, I'm gonna say I want at least a 75% to 100% fill rate for my orders that I wanna go ahead and pick. At which point in time, once I go ahead and do this, it will go ahead and allow me and show me, okay, you have these orders with the criteria of it will be able to fill anywhere from the range of 75 to 100%. You can also see here in the other fields is we can also take it steps further and even filter it down even more. We could sort this down into uh, different zones. So that way you could have a different user go ahead and maybe pick just the dry goods. Maybe you have a different user go ahead and pick frozen goods. You could even prioritize it by the customer level. So maybe you have different customers with different priorities. And so what, we, what this uh, program goes ahead and allows you to do is go ahead and actually go ahead and aggregating all this data and then actually releasing the pick tickets. That way you're actually sending orders out that can actually be picked in real time. So now that I've gone ahead and we have our order that we wanna go ahead and pick, what I have on my right hand side here is our ScanCo warehouse interface here. So what we were gonna really focus on today is what I'm circling our picking and our shipping icon. So I've already gone ahead, I've created my order and, so, and I've released that out to be picked. What we would do in this scenario is we would take our handheld and our user and we're gonna go ahead and select our picking icon and we're gonna go into order picking today. At which point in time, we just need to go ahead and follow our prompts and they're very easy to go ahead and follow. So which warehouse are we going ahead and picking in today? I'm gonna to go ahead and say I'm picking in my central warehouse. At which point in time, what we're gonna go ahead and do now is we're gonna pick these orders and what we're actually selecting is that we're gonna stage them in the shipping area. All that we have to do now is we can go ahead and type in the order number that we are picking. Now, we are ScanCo, so we, what you can go ahead and do is barcode your forms in which you can go ahead and uh, just scan this information in. As you can see here, we have a very easy to use keypad, at which point you can go ahead and type that information in. Or lastly, what you can go ahead and do is use the magnifying glass to drill down into all the available sales orders that are available to be picked in the Sage system. So as you can go ahead and see here, we have a lot of different orders. So I'm just gonna go ahead and say, you know what? I'm ready to pick my order 216, at which point in time, now it's gonna go ahead and tell me there are two lines on the order. As you can go ahead and see here, the lines already picked is zero and the lines picked is, or lines you can pick is two. So what I would go ahead and do here as a user, I'm gonna go ahead and accept that. At which point in time, it's gonna go ahead and direct me straight. It tells me I need to go to bin A110 and scan item 6655. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do here, I'm gonna go ahead and scan my item. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and tell the, the system how many I am actually picking. I'm gonna go ahead and hit accept. And now it's gonna take me to my next item, 8971. And now what I'm actually gonna go ahead and do here as an example is I'm gonna actually go ahead and scan an item not on this sales order. Once I go ahead and do that, as you can go ahead and see here, it says invalid entry. This is doing this because we are validating against the sales order. So this is a crucial part. So there's gonna be a really cut down on the errors of mispicking. And so we're gonna go right back here. I'm gonna go ahead and scan my item 8971 as I should have. 
And now it's going to go ahead and, and as this is a lotted item, we also talk bidirectionally with Sage. So it doesn't matter what a type of evaluation you're using, whether it be lotted items, serialized items, or even just standard items in Sage. What we can go ahead and do here is take advantage, and we're going to go ahead and say I'm picking this January 12th lot, and we're going to go ahead and pick 10 that is required for this sales order. Once I go ahead and I collect all the items, it's going to go ahead and give me this warning. Do I want to submit the data collected on the handheld for processing, at which I will say yes. And now what I'm going to go ahead and do is I am going to go ahead and ship this product out. So when I go into the, my shipping icon, I'm going to go into my shipping here. And we work the same way that Sage does. So what we will go ahead and do here is we would work with the shipper ID. As you can go ahead and see here, you might have a standard uh, employee ID, you might have a shipper, uh, a supervisor ID. So we'll go ahead and select that. Just as before, we were working on sales order 216, so I'll just go ahead and type that in. And now what we're able to go ahead and even collect is box level detail. So let's say that all of my item 6655 is going to go ahead and fit within box one. And then our second item, 8971, we'll go ahead and show how that fits within box two. So as you can go ahead and see here, I'm going to start off with my box one. And now I'm going to go ahead and scan my item 6655. At which point in time, it's going to ask me what quantity I'm actually shipping out. At which point, I'll go ahead and confirm that I'm shipping the 20 out that we had picked. And now that we want to, we've filled that uh, whole entire box up, all of our item 6655 has completely filled up that first box. And now we want to go ahead and capture the box level detail. Well, at this point in time, on the top right hand side of the screen is an options menu, at which point in time I can go ahead and select that, hit my next box feature, at which point you'll notice my box level detail has changed to two. At which point in time, now what I would go ahead and do is continue along. I'll scan my item 8971. And then when it comes, comes to our lot information, just as all of our other information, we can type this information in, we can scan it in. Or if we look up our lookup feature, we can go ahead and see that we've actually allocated the 10 right here of the 15 that are available when we were picking. So I'll go ahead and select that, type in the quantity that I'm shipping out, at which point in time, now, once we do our review, we will be able to see that there are no unresolved line items. Let's go ahead and send this information into Sage. Once I go ahead and send this information into Sage, what we'll be able to do is go in into our shipping data entry. We'll go ahead and type in our shipper ID as we had done there before. We can go ahead and see the latest batch that we had gone ahead and done here. At which point in time, now we can go ahead, we can see our item 6655 was shipped out with 20. We have a package level detail of one. And then if I go down into my item 8971, now we can go ahead and see the package level detail is two. As you can see right here from the device, we have completely automated the whole entire uh, transaction into shipping data entry. And this right here is where we, a Starship will go ahead and take over. And I will go ahead and hand this off to Matt. All right, thanks so much, Andrew. Okay, share my screen here. Okay, so as Andrew just showed, a nice thing with the ScanCo scan solution, right from that handheld, you can actually um, determine what items go in what package, actually create that entry inside of a shipping data entry in Sage, and then when it's time to ship, uh, with Starship, our shippers can work directly right with inside of Starship. So we actually have a direct interface. There's no need for them to actually have to be inside a shipping data entry. Um, they can actually just work with Starship. And the nice thing with that is technically now you don't even need Sage installed on your shipping machines. So right inside the center of my screen here is the Starship program. Uh, upper left hand side is our source document. So with Starship, we can pulled by invoice sales or by customer number. Uh, nice thing, again, with that, the ScanCo solution, that entry's been created inside of Sage. So really recommend that we use the invoice. Uh, we do have an enhancement that allows you to still enter in the sales order number, because I, I know on most uh, picking sheets or whatever you're shipping against, that's the source document. 
number would be the sales order number. Uh, just like with Scanco, if you have that barcoded uh, with Starship, you can use just a regular wedge type scanner and, and scan in that source document. We also have a lookup where I can click on the magnifying glass and actually see all my orders. From there, as you can see, I can create filters if I need to um, and, and also get into actually batch processing if I, if I wanted to. So I could select as many orders as I'd like, click process selected, and what Starship's going to start doing for me as a shipper is just generating all my shipping documents. Um, here, I'll just mainly type in that one order that Andrew just packed up and got ready for shipment for me. So I'm going to put in a sales order 216, and what Starship's going to do is reach inside of Sage and grab all the order header as well as that line item detail information from sales order 216. Okay. So Starship's just looking in the Sage fields. We basically just map the fields, and they are bidirectional mappings. Uh, so based off these fields, they can have a one-to-many relationship. So from the ship via, that's automatically going to tell Starship the carrier, service, billing type, account information. Uh, from there, you know, we can automate third-party shipments. We're, we're automatically selecting the billing type, making it third-party or collect, and grabbing all the customer's account information. Um, the sender, that's the company that inside of Sage we're pulling your order from. So Starship does support multiple companies as well as warehouses and or locations. The recipient, that's the ship to from that sales order. Okay. Uh, Starship will also do address validation. We do validate zip plus four. And we also will automatically validate and correct the commercial residential flag. So going to help save on those address correction fees as well as the commercial residential flag correction fee. Great. Uh, down in the packaging view, a uh, nice thing again with Scanco, they've, you've already been able to pack all your items into your boxes. Uh, so however you define that shipment on your handheld device, that's how Starship's going to bring it in. So as you can see here, we have the uh, printer stand in one box and the uh, flex disk in the, the second box. Um, on the packaging type, uh, inside Starship, you can actually set up custom packaging. This can be bags, bales, boxes, pallets, what have you. Uh, but nice thing with using custom boxes is once they are set up, Starship will automatically populate the dimensions for you. Um, we do take into consideration dim weights. I know nowadays that is a big thing with UPS and FedEx. And just to remind you, uh, USPS uh, might be a good alternative for some of you, uh, depending on your weight and where you're sending your items to. Um, you know, with USPS, there is no need to worry about dimensional weights, residential charges, fuel surcharges, and actually our USPS module, uh, we have some special rates. Uh, so please feel free to reach out to me if you'd like to know more about that. Um, but again, um, once we have our boxes in there, you know, we can default weights. My system, I don't have a scale hooked up, so I'm just grabbing weights from actually inside a Sage. But if you do have scales, we integrate with most scales, so the system could automatically pull the weight from, right from that scale. On the line item detail, uh, of course, again, Starship is just grabbing this information from Sage. We also have our own database where we'll start storing your inventory items. Uh, reason we do this, because uh, inside of Sage currently, you know, there's not a spot for like the NMFC codes. Uh, Starship can handle LTL shipments, so freight class. We store all that. Um, this in order here happens to be international. So I know starting in 2017 inside of Sage, they added the, the commodity code field. But as you can see here, inside of Starship, all that information can be set up and stored. Um, so again, one last thing my shipper has to worry about, you know, if I was missing a, a Schedule B or, or a commodity code here, I could actually look it up right from Starship, so I can search by code or by description. So again, all that information is going to be stored right inside of, say, inside of Starship for your shipper. One last thing they have to stop and manually fill out. Uh, usually next step, if we need to rate shop, I can click the green dollar icon here or go to the rate shop tab. The way Starship works is we make the live direct connection to your carriers. Uh, so we currently have over two dozen uh, carrier modules, that's parcel as well as LTL carriers, and we use their web services. We make the call directly to, in this case, as you can see, UPS and FedEx. Um, we are gonna return your live negotiated contract rate that you have with the carrier. And I can also change this, as you can see, I can see the list or publish rates if I like. So from here, as a shipper, I, I can take a look, maybe change 
select the least expensive carrier. With Starship, you can also do ship via rules where you can actually set up triggers and have Starship automatically rate shop this shipment and then select the carrier and or service based off your rules. So, hey, maybe Starship automatically select the least expensive carrier service for the shipment. Again, just something else as a shipper, I don't have to worry about selecting. On the charges tab, uh, to process this shipment, we don't have to click on this. I just like to show it because with Starship, you can also get into setting up freight rules. Freight rules can be percentages, min max, flat rates. Uh, it can be the triggers on those can go all the way down to line item detail. So if you ship oversized items, you can say, hey, anytime item one, two, three, four, four is on an order, automatically add $20 because it's oversized. Um, here, I'm actually just using a user to find field inside of Sage. It's a checkbox called freight discount lives in customer maintenance. So as you can see, it's selected. This customer is receiving a 10% discount on the freight. And when I'm ready, I'm going to click the ship and process button or F5 key. So as soon as I do that, Starship is going to process this shipment. Um, you can also save shipments without processing them. So if maybe if you were staging a shipment, had a large order, wanted to start it, come back and finish it up later, you can do that. But once I ship and process, that's when Starship is going to generate all my shipping documents. Normally, these would just go right to a printer. But for the sake of this webinar, I'm just showing you, previewing them here. I'm also using what we call our smart label. As you can see, the smart label prints the shipping label and packaging list together. Uh, so this would go to a laser printer. Uh, you can most certainly send the shipping label to a thermal printer. If you want to use Starship's packing list, you have the choice. That could go to a thermal printer as well. Or if you wanted to, it could go to a laser printer. Okay, so it labeled box one, box two. And because this was international, Starship can generate all the international documents. Uh, same thing if this was an LTL, we can do bill lading forms, pallet labels, so on and so forth. Okay, order header, line item, detail automatically going to populate. Forms can be customized, so maybe you want them signed and dated. Again, one less thing a shipper has to worry about stopping and filling out. Okay, NAFTA forms. All that information is going to automatically populate. And as a shipper now, I ship and process, get my shipping documents, I'm in the rinse repeat cycle, ready to move on, put in my next order or scan my next pick ticket, and I go through the whole process again. Real quickly, I'll just switch gears and we'll, we'll jump into Sage and go into invoice data entry. We'll bring up this invoice for sales order 216. So the right back with Sage, I'm going to go into the tracking table here. Or the tracking button. So this is actually writing this information right into Sage's tracking table. So as you can see, tracking information. Um, I can use the package tracking item lookup button if I wanted to. Okay. And then, of course, on the totals tab, we can write back the freight amount, plus or minus any freight rules. You can get into doing write back rules. So if there are some scenarios where you do not want freight to be written back, uh, you can tell Starship when and when not to write back freight. Uh, the freight cost from Starship, that's just a user defined field I added. Uh, so it is a custom field. Just kind of showing you some additional features that you can get into with Starship. You know, here I can take additional information and pass it back into user defined fields. So this field here, I'm actually passing what this shipment is going to cost me. So in this case, what UPS is going to charge me. A um, little last, uh, last check here. So I can take a look at this and before it updates it, update this, take a look and say, yeah, you know what? This customer got a discount. No, they should have received. Um, you know, full price plus some, so I can simply override that freight amount field. Okay. And then also included with Starship is our eNotify program. So eNotify allows you to um, set up your own custom email templates. Uh, very simple to design. This is the email viewer. So this email viewer can be installed on as many workstations. Uh, doesn't require any additional C or licenses. So with Starship, you really just need a seat or license for any user that's going to be inside Starship shipping at the same time. They are concurrent like Sage licenses. Okay, so here's a quick example of an email you can design, send this out to your customers, you know, give them the item to box breakdown, and then as well as the tracking numbers. Okay. And the other included software is our dashboard program, great reporting tool, and you know, we have some performance indicators, and shipment by mode, by user, um, can reports, late delivery reports, a great report. It's going to go out and compare all your shipments. It's going to compare the guaranteed delivery date to the actual delivery date, let you know of any package that wasn't delivered on time. So you can reach out to your carrier and try to get a refund. All right. And 
the rating I showed you from actually inside of uh, Starship, you can also do that from sales order entry. Uh, we do add that, and again, there's no additional fee for that. But it's really what I want to show you, kind of 30,000 foot overview of Starship. I really appreciate everyone taking time out of the day for this webinar, and I'm going to hand it off to Patty so she can show you how to easily collect funds for your order. Thank you, Matt. Simon, Andrew, and Matt, great presentation. And ladies and gentlemen, what more can you ask for? You have complete automation, security, compliance, happy customers with CertiPro and the cycle count, ScanCo and their warehouse management solution and scanning solution, as well as Starship with Rate Shop and eNotify, among the other features that Matt was explaining. What do we have to do now at the end with credit card processing? We definitely have to get you paid. Um, American Payment Solutions has been in business for well over 25 years. Our CEO and founder was one of the original developers of what is now known as PIA, or Sage Payment Solutions. No account is too small or too large for us. We process for merchants that average from $2,000 per month to over $20 million per month. So please do not hesitate to contact us if you'd like to learn more about understanding your merchant statements and lowering your merchant rates. I'd like to just mention before I show the actual software a little bit about level three processing. Most people are not familiar with level three processing and let me just explain it in a nutshell. It's a program put in place by Visa and MasterCard that guarantees to lower your rate to at least a 43% less than what you're processing now. So for example, if your current rate is 2.65, it can go as low as 1.85 or 0.03% depending on the volume of the transaction. What do you need in order to obtain the lower rate? Visa MasterCard requires 13 to 16 data fields. Needless to say, nobody really has time to key those fields in. So we actually automated the process for you. The average savings by simply processing through level three is about $18,000 per year. We have seen $112,000 a year being saved by a company who processed the required fields and processed business to business or business to government transactions within the continental US. Now, now just so you get an idea, these are the fields that are being required. A lot of these fields are not available out of the box from Sage. So what we did is, we created user-defined fields in order to submit everything that Visa MasterCard requires in order to obtain that lower rate for our merchants. So why not let Sage do all the heavy lifting for you? We will take care of obtaining the data fields, delivering them on your behalf, and guaranteeing the lowest possible rates in the industry for you. Now, just so you get an idea, here's an example of an analysis review that is an actual merchant of ours now. We were able to save them close to $17,000 a year, and all they had to do was process through American Payment Solutions, continue to process within Sage, and we were able to deliver the data fields that I mentioned to you. We also integrate to several solutions out there, many that are not listed here, but just so you get an idea, they are listed on the screen, and of course, some of the presenters are on here as well. So, to our featured presentation today that I'd like to show you, Click to Pay is a feature that we've added to our standard credit card processing. Now, within Sage 100, you will notice that everything is pretty straightforward and simple. You do not have to change your existing workflow process if you're currently processing through PAYA or PAYA. Um, and you can obtain the level three rates regardless of where the payment came from. In a nutshell, Click to Pay will allow you to print your paperless office invoices, and what we did is added this Click Pay Now button on the body of the invoice. Your customer will be able to submit their payment, and that payment will appear in cash receipts for you. So let me show you what that would look like within Sage. Now what I did was, as everyone was presenting, I prepared an invoice and sent it to my customer. Before we go to the invoice, let me just show you how simple it would be to set everything up within Sage when you're using American Payment Solutions. Level three, we simply go to Company Maintenance Library, I'm sorry, Library Master Company Maintenance and turn on the level three processing. We also offer the option to process ACH payments and we offer the option to turn on the click to pay. If you decide to use click to pay, you can 
set the default to opt out by customers or opt in by customer. This is entirely up to you. And then notice the user-defined fields that we added in order to obtain the level three data that is required by Visa and MasterCard. You'll see the summary commodity code, item commodity code, and ship from postal code. So once everything is set up, you can have your customers either use the click to pay to make payments or use your standard Sage process to process the payments within sales order, sales order invoice data entry, as well as accounts receivable cash receipts. You can process pre-authorizations as well as direct captures directly during the sales order process. Um, you can also accept payments against invoices through accounts receivable cash receipts. Now I wanted to show you the customer maintenance screen because you'll notice nothing really changes at all. You're able to continue to keep the same data fields that you currently have within Sage with the difference that you have the option now for ACH as well as credit cards and also the difference that you'll see the APS window comes up when you're adding a brand new card. We follow Sage's security settings and user accounts, so you don't have to worry about resetting any of that up. Really, all you have to do is enter your credit card information and you decide if you want to save it or just use it once. You can add it at the customer maintenance level, at the sales order level on the fly, as well as accounts receivable, cash receipts. So I'm just gonna process a quick sales order Let's just assume the shipment um, or, or the items are ready to be shipped. And you already have the shipping fee because you had to rate shop with um, Starship, for example. And let's just have that shipping fee already in the field. Now, the nice thing about processing with American Payment Solutions is that you can add a shipping fee at the authorization level or at the capture level. And we will update it for you. So let me just go ahead and accept, submit my payments. Now notice that my credit card information will autofill for me or I can edit the card information and the, as I mentioned, add a card on the fly. Once I submit the transaction, it will go through our gateway. We will verify the information you provided is a match. If it is, you'll get a transaction ID and the transaction is pre-authorized. Now remember, you can skip right past the pre-authorization level and simply capture right at the sales order entry or continue on to invoicing. Now, before I go to invoicing, I did create an invoice and printed it out through Paperless Office. And I'd like to show you what your customer will receive when you print out the invoice from Paperless Office using click to pay So here's the customer side of things now. They receive your email with the attached invoice. And when they click on the invoice, you'll see a standard crystal form. This form can be completely customizable. You can add your logo, et cetera. Now this is what we've added for click to pay. You simply click, your customer will simply click on the pay here button. They will be directed to a secured page that will allow them to enter a payment. And I apologize, it looks like this payment was already made. If a payment was already made, then they will also see that the payment was paid, uh, the uh, invoice was paid for. If the payment has not gone through, then they're able to submit their payments online. Once they submit the payment online, what you will see on the cash receipt side of things is the payment itself. So let's just say a payment had been posted. You would see the amount of the payment here. And then you could see the details within cash receipts. So you can just go to your customer and check the invoices that have been paid for. Now I also mentioned that if you do not use click to pay, you can also apply payments directly against invoices through cash receipts. And it's very simple. You'll notice that I really don't do anything out of the ordinary here. I simply enter my credit amount or my payment to my amount, I should say, and continue my standard process. And let's just say that I want to choose all invoices. I'll say accept. You see all of my invoices here. I can go to the payment tab now. My default credit card will appear, but depending on the security settings, the user will be able to choose a different credit card or use a credit card on the fly. And then you can proceed to submitting the transaction. Now, you can always process individual transactions or in batches. The click to pay payments will also appear in cash receipts. All you have to do is continue your end of day update and the amount of the transactions will be updated. You can also see the transactions through our portal. 
-hmm. You can also process transactions through our portal if ever needed. The portal is very straightforward. You can see that we allow for the different types of transactions. The difference being that you would have to key in, for example, all of the data that is required in order to process a transaction, credit card information, items, et cetera, customer information. You can also set up for recurring invoices and view literally thousands of reports that are available through this portal. We can set you up to auto batch each night. If you batch out by 9 p.m. Eastern time, you should have the funds available in your bank account the next morning by 9 a.m. And you won't have to worry about remembering to batch out. We can set you up to auto batch and, and uh, actually send the report to one or multiple recipients. The transactions that you've processed will appear in our portal. Um, you'll see a bird's eye view. You can see that we're referencing the sales order number that we just processed with the customer information. This email address is actually assigned per card and we'll receive a receipt when you complete a transaction. The transaction ID will also populate within Sage and follow the transaction in Sage forever. Now notice when I click on the transaction ID, the level of information that we've obtained from Sage, and this is all happening live. We go down to the line level detail, and this is all of the information that we're actually providing Visa MasterCard on our merchant's behalf once again, making sure that we obtain the very lowest rates available to all of our merchants. Now, getting back to the services that we provide, I do want to point out the fact that we do not charge for the credit card processing module, installation, implementation, training, maintenance, or support. Level 3 is available and completely automated. I know that other processors might offer it, but they will ask you to key in the different fields. I mentioned that we do have 12-hour funding, and we also offer American Express Ops Blue and guarantee the lowest rates in the industry for American Express as well. We offer assistance with PCI compliance. We have a team at our corporate office in Arizona dedicated exclusively to making sure our merchants either become or remain PCI compliant. This is at no charge. And I don't know if anybody on this call recalls, but there was a situation with uh, TLS 1.2, where some of you were actually down for a couple of days. We saw this 30 days ahead of time and informed all of our merchants. You are dealing with credit card processing industry experts. We show you not only how to understand your statements and understand where the fees are coming from, who's making the money where, and where there's room for savings, but we also show you any industry-specific requirements that are necessary for you to continue processing and get the best rates available in the industry. We offer very transparent merchant statements and guarantee our rates in writing so you don't have to worry about the rates creeping up on you. So if anybody is interested in learning more about understanding your merchant statement, finding out if there is any money being left on the table because your rates are so high due to the lack of level three functionality, let me know. We simply ask that you submit two of your most recent merchant statements. We will analyze them and provide you with a full presentation of the analysis results, as well as the workflow process within Sage 100 that you can take advantage of. Talk about not only level three, but click to pay functionality that again is available to all of our merchants at no charge. And we will also talk about um, any requirements that you may have when it comes to the installation time. So start saving money, everybody. Let me know if you're interested in any of the products that were presented today from Certiflow, Scanco, and Starship, and I will find you the savings that will help you offset the cost of any of these solutions. With that, I'd like to thank you very much for allowing me to present, and Adrian, I'll hand it back over to you. Thank you, Patty. Great presentation, everybody. I'm going to go ahead and launch a poll. If I can ask the audience just